Hey guys, I'm um, going to do a little more stoichiometry with you, uh, but this time it's stoichiometry with thermal chemistry. So a couple things you need to know for this week uh, as we expand on what we did last week. So <coughs> when I think about stoichiometry, remember stoichiometry is a way I can figure out products from the amount of reactants. So if I give you um, a reaction like this one right here, right? so methane is burned in the presence of oxygen uh, to produce CO2 and H2O. So before I can do this stoichiometry problem, I look at, I have my enthalpy here. So my enthalpy here says that uh, 390.3 kilojoules per mole is released. And I know it's released because I have a little negative sign there. Okay, so if I was going to put that into the equation, since it's exothermic, I know it's exothermic because it's negative, I'll just add it here. I would add it as 390.3 kilojoules. All right. So remember that in exothermic, it's added in the products, and in endothermic, it's added in the reactants. So no matter what it is, you know where to put the heat. Okay, so there's my heat. So if I look at this problem, it says if 20 grams of methane is combusted in the presence of excess oxygen, uh, what is the change in energy associated with the reaction? All right. So uh, this is my start. In my end, that's it, right? Change in energy is my end. So my start, so if I had my my little diagram we had for um, stoichiometry, right? So my start is there. So my start I would be over here. So I could say. 20 grams, methane. Remember, I have to go to moles. Uh, so I have to figure out, so I've got 12 and 4, so I've got 16.05 grams, right? All right, so I have 20 grams divided by 16.05 grams, and I get 1.2 moles. All right, I want to get rid of CH4, right? My coefficient here is 1. And then I get my 390.3. Kilojoules. And the coefficient before that is 1 as well. So the reason why I showed you this is there's no need to go to here because this is for mass. This is for particles. This is for volume. And I don't need to go to mass particles or volume, so I could just stop here. All right? So I don't really need this extra equation. So if I got 1.2 times 398. I get 468. I get 470 kilojoules, right? So it says the energy associated. So here's the trick here. So this is four hundred seventy kilojoules released. If it was endothermic, it would be four hundred seventy kilojoules absorbed. But since it's exothermic, it's released. So just remember how to do that. There's a shorter uh, formula you can use. You can use Q equals m. times enthalpy, right? N times H, right? Remember N, uh, when we did gas problems, N is mole, right? So if I did Q is equal to N times H, remember I would use that negative 30, 
But that just says that, that that's what the change in enthalpy is. But you still have to change it into uh, where it belongs in the problem. So just know that if it's exothermic, at the end, you have to make it a positive value released. Right? If it's endothermic, it's going to be a negative value absorbed. Or you can just use a value absorbed. So hopefully that helps you out. Okay, so let's move on. Another part of this worksheet I gave you, you have to figure out how to do is energy associated with phase changes or physical states. Um, so endo and exothermic. So remember physical states, I have um, freezing and melting. I have condensation and vaporization. All right, so we have our phase changes there. Uh, there's a couple additional phase changes, right? So if I go from um, solid, right, to gas, That's going to be called sublimation. If I go from gas, I had to relocate to my backyard because people make so much noise in my house. So if I'm going from gas to a solid, it's called deposition. Okay, so uh, here's another way to look at it. So I have if I have solid liquid gas. Remember, anytime I go from a um, a more organized to a less organized state, I have to uh, absorb energy. Remember, kinetic molecular theory told us that. So if I'm going from a solid to a liquid, I have to absorb energy. If I'm going from a liquid to a gas, I have to absorb energy. If I'm going from a gas, a solid, all the way to a gas, I have to absorb, absorb energy. So all of those are exothermic. Right? If I'm going from a liquid to a solid, I've got to take energy out. If I'm from going from a gas to a liquid, I have to take energy out. If I'm going all the way from a gas to a solid, I have to take energy out. So all of those will be endothermic. Okay? All right. So those are energies associated with phase changes. Make sure you understand which ones are exo and which ones are endothermic. So we can look at another way of looking at these graphs. If you look at this diagram up here, right? So if we go up to freezing, right? So freezing for water happens at zero, right? So um, if I'm going from, so right here, I have a solid. Here I have liquid. And here I have gas, right? So if I'm heating up ice, as soon as I get to zero, ice melts, and ice melts at the heat of fusion. So as you see over here, it takes 6.01 kilojoules per mole to melt ice. That's the heat of fusion, right? If I go back the other way, right? If I go this way, it's actually called the heat of solidification. So the heat of fusion and the heat of solidification, so this would be delta H, let me make that a little better. So the heat of solidification, right, since I'm going the opposite way, it would be negative 601 kilojoules per mole because I have to take that out, right? So as I continue to go here, if I'm going, if I got liquid and I've got to go to gas, I've got to vaporize it. So the heat of vaporization is 40 kilojoules per mole, right? So if I went the other way, that would be called delta H condensation, and that would be negative 
40.7. So since it's the opposite direction, it's just the opposite. So this was negative 6.4. Right, so if you're switching directions, you're switching the sign. Okay, so we can take a question like this. Oh, I forgot to tell you, in the middle here, if I'm just changing, right, if I'm just changing temperature, then that's your Q is equal to MTT. And that would be the same for here, and that would be the same for down here too. Okay, because you're not changing phase, you're just changing temperature. All right. So this over here, this is for phase change. That's your formula. This right here is for temperature in a single phase. All right, so make sure there's two different formulas. I'm going to show you how it works. All right, so how much energy is required to freeze 10 grams of gaseous water at 105 degrees? Okay, so if I've got gaseous water, Right, I'm up in the gas phase here, right? So I'm up, if I have gaseous water, I'm up in the gas phase here. So this is going to be my start. Okay, so I've got to get this down to 100 degrees, right, before I can go to do a phase change, right? So if I'm up here, then my formula is going to be the Q, right? So here, Q is equal to mass is 10 grams, right, times C. I have to look over here. So C for gas is 2.01. Oops. Yeah, 2.010 joules per gram degree Celsius. And my temperature change, I've got a decrease at 5 degrees. So I've got a negative 5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I've got to go down 5 degrees Celsius. My second part, I've got to go through this phase change. I'm not going through vaporization because vaporization is going from liquid to gas. I'm going through condensation. But since it's a phase change, my, my formula is going to be Q is equal to N. So now I've got to figure out moles. All right? So I've got 10 grams. And I've got 18.02. Moles per gram, right? That's going to get rid of my, and then I've got to multiply that times my negative 40 moles. So that's going to be my Q for step two. So this is step one. This is step two. Step three is here. I've got to cool the water, okay? So step three, I've got to do my Q is equal to MCT again. So I got my Q. I still got 10 grams. Now I've got liquid. So I've got my 4.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. And now I've got to go from 100 degrees here to 0 degrees here. All right? So I've got to take 100 Celsius out. I'm going to take 100 degrees Celsius out. And then my final, right? Uh, what was my question? I lost my question. To freeze it. So freeze it, i got to go to a solid. So I'm back to... So my number four is here. Right? So my number four is Q is going to be equal to... I got my same formula there. Oops, I did that wrong. So this should be grams per mole, because you're going to end up with moles on top. So this over here should have been grams per mole. All right, and this will be now times my heat of solidification, right, which will be my negative 6.01 kilo 
controls. All right, because I've got to go through all of those four stages. One, two, three, four. All right, I've got to go through all four of those stages. So when you solve these problems, remember, here's the important thing to remember. I've got joules here, and I've got kilojoules here. I've got joules here and kilojoules here. So whatever you get here, you're going to have to divide by 1,000 to equal kilojoules, right? So we can add everything up, and at the end I'll get kilojoules. So when you solve those, that's the way you're going to do it, the four steps. And the last thing we have to talk about today uh, is Gibbs. So Gibbs is a measure of free energy of the system. Uh, and free energy is simply the energy that's available to do work. So we talked about uh, chemical potential energy in the past. And remember, that was the energy stored in the bonds of things. So if I have glucose, right, glucose has a positive Gibbs, right? So what we say is G, if G is positive, uh, you can get positive work. If G is negative, you get negative work, right? Um, so if I burn a molecule of, of glucose, I release the energy in the bonds, and my G is going to be negative because now it has less energy available to do work than before I started. All right. So uh, easy way to look at it. So if I've got, if you look at here, it says exergonic. Gonic means energy. So exergonic and exothermic. Exo, exothermic, it's about the same thing. So you can say the X is roughly equal to exothermic. Remember, uh, reactants and products. My products have less energy than my reactants. If they've lost energy, my G is less than zero. So my delta G would be negative. Right? So this is endergonic. So endergonic is roughly equal to endothermic. You see that my products have more energy than my reactants. So delta G, the change in G will be positive. Now there's some other things that go into this that we'll discuss later when we talk about equilibrium. Right, so if you look at, I'm going to make this a little bigger. Right, um, entropy is this other thing. Right, so entropy is equal to the letter S, and that's the measure the measure of disorder. Right, so if disorder increases, right. If disorder increases, look, there's a negative value here, right? Then G becomes more negative, okay? So if it increases, G becomes more negative. So if I take a molecule of glucose and I split it apart, right, I have less energy, right? So here's the thing to remember. Loss increases delta S and so this increases delta S and decreases delta G or oops okay so you need that for a lab this week that's the only reason why I'm telling you now all right Okay, I hope you have a good week. You're staying well and safe, and I will talk to you soon. Uh, I'll post a thing for a Zoom this weekend if anybody needs more information and explanation. Okay, bye.